Hey guys, um, I got a couple projects I want to work on for this week. Uh, first, there's a gap between my two cabinets. Um, so I want to 3D print a white filler to bridge the gap so I don't drop stuff in there and just kind of so it looks a little better. Uh, second, I got to make a new handle for the glass door so the end effector of the robot can actually open the door and close it, of course. Uh, and then lastly, I want to design the end effector that goes on the end of the robot arm so it could actually um, bridge the distance between the robot and the build plate. And I think I'm going to make it with like a pin so it can go up inside of the little slots on the build plate. Uh, so let's jump on the computer and I'll show you what I have designed here. We're uh, here in Fusion 360 and first is the door handle. Um, so this is, I measured the handle that's currently on the glass door, and this is the mounting, and then these are just uh, holes, and I think they're small enough that if I put the same screws that came out of the original door handle, that it should just self-tap itself into there. Um, and then the old one just kind of made that hoop shape, so I made it bigger, and then I put the flat on the end, because my idea is to use the pin on the end effector to come underneath the paddle and then use the pin to open and close this. Uh, so there's this and uh, I gave it a little arch to it just to give it a little more thickness in here and a little more shape and easier to use. And that's, so this is the gap I was talking about um, between the two cabinets and it's because of the mounting brackets in there with some rubber. Uh, so this is to scale now of my current setup. So I designed this in here. It's just a 3D printed wedge that slips in and fills the gap. Um, I was going to make it kind of like a spring fit, but I think if it's printed to the correct size, it should just uh, slip right in and keep itself in there. Uh, and again, it's just so I don't keep constantly drop stuff between here and kind of clean this area up. Lastly is the end effector. It's kind of hard to see here, so let me turn off the robot. Um, and you know what, I will just isolate the end effector. Uh, it was already isolated. Uh, so if I isolate that, and then I can turn on the build plate. So this was the idea that there's a spindle that comes down from the robot. Um, then I have an M3 bolt that'll go through here and sit flush inside there with a captive nut on the back and then the slot so it can pinch onto the spindle. And then it'll reach out and then this pin here will go up inside the build plate. The, these cutouts are already in the build plate and uh, the idea is I can get in there and then lift it up. I, uh, what I was saying with the uh, the paddle for the door is I want the door to sit right here and then this little pin can be what pulls on the on the paddle. That's why there's the flat at the bottom of the paddle. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the parts and uh, let's get to printing. <laughs> just with my hand, I was holding this, and I lift up the uh, build platform, it is just teetering off this corner. It doesn't have enough leverage to hold the plate flat and lift it to get it out of there. So I made some a design revision, and you can see if I just change all that. So I added on this bit, and the idea is, is the pin will go in, and then this can all pivot over, and there's a slot in here, so this will hold the plate. And now it's got leverage on this side and this side, so when it lifts, it'll be able to lift the platform out and then pull it out directly. Uh, so, made that change. Um, I will also print this one, and then we can start looking into uh, programming the robot to open the door. Okay, here's the three 3D printed parts. Um, this is that block, so it literally is just going to go in here slip and it's it's tight enough um, that it doesn't move or slide but it'll prevent stuff from falling in there and just kind of makes the look better. Uh, here was the first one, the first clamp. Um, like I said it has 
it's kind of hard to see, but the captive nut there. Um, but it was just, I did end up making it a little longer, uh, the other one. But it just, it didn't work lifting it from the corner. And then here was that second one. Uh, I didn't mention on the CAD file, but because the captive nut couldn't go in there, I changed it and uh, you can see I uh, made the slot so the nut slides in this way and then bolts over. And there it is. Okay, so we got everything. The robot's in its initial position. This is just where it goes. You can change this initial position, but um, it's just set up with the end effector on there. Um, and then I have the DuBot software over, uh, open, and then I kind of made this program. So you see this is door open start and door open end. So I saved this as a cell. So once this program is working properly and I like it, um, I could just save this as a portion, save the removing of the build plate as a portion, and then save the door closing. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to hit play. And we can watch the robot go here. Okay, I'm having a slight issue. Um, when the robot goes to open the door, it pulls it with this and then it pulls it open and then it pushes and then it pushes with that. But what's happening, I don't know if you can see here, I scribed a little line right there. That line is supposed to be with this line of the robot. So what's happening is it's just slipping. Um, because of that spindle has no locking feature, when this pinches on it, you can see it's clearly pinched here, but it's not making enough contact to where this doesn't slip, like I'm physically moving it, I'm not turning the spindle. So what I think I'm going to do is drill into this spindle and put the head of a bolt, and then make a little space probably in the back here where the bolt will sit, and it'll make it so it can't physically spin anymore, because there'll be a, a, like a locking, like a key. To lock it in place um, so that's the next step the other thing is, is I've tried this to program this spindle going in and then turning to get this slot onto the build plate the problem is when it's in there we'll say my hand the thumb is the pin and this is it when it's in there the robot will go in there like this and lift up and then it doesn't pivot on where my thumb is to go like that it pivots back where my wrist is so the problem is that i have to move two or three act two axes at the same time to move it over like this without moving the pin so it's actually very hard um so i had an idea to use this pin and then get a make a second pin so two pins and then over here i found the these little plastic um, product hang tags, and I'll, I'll show it here. Um, I think this would work to stick between the build platform sticker and the actual build plate. So there would just be a little tab here with a hole in it. So the robot can come, go into those two holes, and then lift it up and pull it out. All right, so there we go. Um, it's super cool to see the robot working and moving. Um, so after I did this whole door sequence, I did try and write the sequence to grab the build plate, and that's what got me to the bigger issue. Um, so I think the next video I'm going to modify the end effector, modify the spindle on the actual robot so it doesn't pivot anymore, and then um, put those little tabs that I mentioned in, and then hopefully be able to build the program that actually lifts the build plate to get it out of the uh, to the cabinet. So uh, I just wanted to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you can, subscribe, and you'll stay up to date on uh, where I'm at with the progress of this. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, or if you have any suggestions on how to make the process easier, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching.